So you join me today in my office and today is a big day, it's an upgrade day. So my workhorse for the last 10 years or so has been this iMac set up behind me. Um, it's a 27 inch 2012 iMac and uh, an Apple Thunderbolt display as well. So I've been running two screens for quite some time now so I'm used to that kind of setup. Um, and uh, like I say, I've had this computer for about 10 years now and it's time for an upgrade. So when I bought it back in 2012, um, it was uh, I had it specced up to a fairly high level. Uh, so it had a the top processor which was on offer at the time uh, for this model. So it was a uh, an Intel Core i7 3770 uh, Ivy Bridge type and uh, it had I put 32 gigabytes of RAM in there. Um, and I also had a three terabyte fusion drive put in there. Now, since uh, about probably five or six years ago, the fusion drive, the the uh, the hard disk, the spinning hard disk side of the fusion drive packed up. So I had that replaced with a one terabyte solid state drive. Um, so that's what it's currently running on now. Um, and all in all, I've been over the moon with this computer. It's been absolutely brilliant, but it's time for an upgrade now. So what have I uh, chosen to upgrade it with? Well, I've gone with a Mac Studio. So let's unbox this and then we'll get cracking. Which Mac Studio did I go for? Well, it's the, the basic uh, entry level Mac Studio model. So I went for the M1 Max uh, processor. Uh, so it's got uh, 10 CPU cores, which is eight Firestorm high speed, high performance cores, and two Ice Storm uh, high efficiency cores. So that's what's uh, on the processor side. I've gone for the 24 uh, core GPU, and, uh, and I've upgraded the uh, solid state drive to a one terabyte. Uh, but other than that, it's the basic, most basic uh, Mac Studio uh, on offer at the time of release. What am I going to do about the screens? Well, um, these screens run at 2560 by 1440. Um, the 2012 iMac predates the Retina screen iMacs, uh, which I think were released in around about uh, 2015 or so. So it's a good opportunity to go to something uh, a little bit better now. So um, the iMac screens, I believe, and the Thunderbolt display, I believe, are running at, um, or their maximum capability is sRGB. So I thought, okay, so I need to increase the resolution and go for a slightly wider gamut than sRGB because I'm mostly doing photo editing. Now, do I want to go to an Adobe RGB monitor? I've decided not to um, because um, most of my photo editing is done based on a digital output. So I don't really get much stuff printed. Um, and even when I do, the labs that I use accept the file formats in sRGB anyway. So it's kind of pointless me going to the expense uh, of going to an Adobe RGB quality display. But having said that, I wanted at least to get to a P3 display. So. I looked at uh, a couple of options available to me. Uh, I looked at the Apple Studio uh, display, which is quite expensive for, for what it is, and I need two of them. So that kind of ruled out the Apple uh, Studio display straight away. Um, so I started look at, looking at a couple of BenQ monitors, uh, the PD2700U, uh, and the 2725U and the 2705U. So the 2705U has kind of got a, a dock, uh, Thunderbolt and USB dock built into it, which was quite appealing. But the top of the line 2725, that obviously appealed to, the, to me the most, um, but uh, it's actually quite expensive. So I also started looking at the Asus ProArt displays, the PA279CV, uh, I think it is. Um, and that kind of was fairly comparable in spec to the um, BenQ, although neither of them were P3 apart from the 2725. So which one did I go for? Well, neither actually. So what I ended up going for was a Dell uh, display. Now, Dell kind of came in uh, to my awareness right at the last minute because 
Uh, it's a brand new model that was released in February and it's the U2723QE. So I've got myself two of these and the reason I've gone for this is because it is a brand new model and um, it kind of satisfies my specification requirements as well. So not only is it 27 inches, which is a direct replacement for these two, uh, it's also 4K, so 3840 by 2160 native. Uh, it's 100% sRGB, which is the same as the others. The big difference is it's 98% P3 as well and it's low blue light but it has a high contrast ratio of 2000 to 1. So this is using a brand new technology which is a black IPS uh, screen. So I'm hoping that this will give me darker blacks uh, than a normal IPS display so it's just kind of increasing the contrast. Not only that it's a USB-C connection and it's got um, USBs and um, lots of connections built into it so each monitor is kind of acting as a hub. So each of these will be connected to the Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt ports on the back of the Mac Studio and uh, I'll have hubs running on both of these screens. So that's the reason for the upgrade and uh, I'm going to take this lot apart, set up the Mac Studio and let's see how we get on. So it's the day after now, so I've uh, got everything just about up and running and I'm just going through the, the long-winded process of putting all the software back in. I've chosen to um, set this computer up as a brand new computer rather than just copying everything over from the iMac. Um, so I'm kind of setting it up completely from scratch, uh, which is a good opportunity to have a good clean out of all my files and things like that anyway. A um, couple of things that I have decided to do is that I was using a Lexar HR1, I think it is, a hub, a card reader hub, um, which I had two uh, compact flash card readers and two SD card readers in there. I don't really use compact flash anymore. Uh, I've pretty much transitioned all the way over to SD cards now. So I don't actually need this anymore because there is a SD card reader built into the front of the Mac Studio. So I'm using that from now on. And the other missing thing really from the iMac is that it had a webcam uh, built into the top of the screen. So I've had to buy a, a webcam to put on there as well. Um, just for talking to friends and family, that's all really. But um, it's something that I do use. So uh, they're the two big differences and um, that's it. So I've got the Lightroom photo library all up and running now. So the next step is to do a bit of a test just to see how it compares to the uh, to the old iMac. Now I'm not into um, benchmark scores and all that sort of stuff really. There's plenty of other videos on YouTube uh, talking about things like that. But having said that, I did have a look at, um, it was either Geekbench or Cinebench I think, can't really remember now, uh, to compare my um, iMac to the new Mac Studio and if numbers equate to power which I'm not sure they do but if they do um, the um, Mac Studio that I've got uh, the CPU is uh, around 12 times more powerful than the iMac and the graphics cores are about 27 times more powerful so uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens so uh, anyway, let's get cracking with some uh, real world tests in Lightroom.
So my first real-world test was to import uh, 2,704 Canon RAW images, uh, which total up to 62 gigabytes uh, in size. And uh, these were images from a recent trip to Ariaf Lake and Heath, uh, which have yet to be imported into my uh, Lightroom library. Uh, so with a little bit of uh, renaming added and copying them to my Drobo external uh, disk pack, uh, I didn't apply any develop settings on import and these are the results. The iMac took 1 hour 13 minutes and 22 seconds and the Mac Studio uh, took uh, about half an hour less, 46 minutes and 48 seconds. So this number of images was fairly uh, busy for uh, a day at uh, Lake and Heath. There was lots going on, but it's fairly representative of a typical day or weekend at an air show such as uh, React at Fairford. My second test was to use the develop module and uh, adjust uh, edit one image and then copy those settings to the remaining images. And as you can see here, it was a tie break. Uh, the iMac and the Mac Studio both took six seconds to complete the task. Now this next test is the one that I'm mostly interested in because using Topaz is one area recently which I've really seen the iMac starting to struggle uh, where it's been showing its age. Um, typically it takes around about 50 seconds to a minute to uh, apply denoise to a single image. So on this test I took 50 unedited raw Canon CR2 images. I put them straight into Topaz Denoise AI and with the AI processor setting in the preferences set to GPU I set the uh, software to work to apply noise reduction to all 50 images. Uh, the iMac took 58 minutes and 48 seconds and the Mac Studio staggeringly took just 3 minutes 37 seconds. Now I'm assuming here that this is the unified memory on the Mac Studio's GPU which is getting to work here but the difference is pretty significant so I'm quite happy with the result of this one. So final test in Lightroom is to export all of the 2704 images uh, onto a desktop folder. So this is going straight onto an SSD. Um, no buffering or slowdown required to uh, go onto a hard disk. And each image was resized to 2000 pixels on the log edge and exported in sRGB format in a full quality JPEG. And here you can see the result is that the iMac gave uh, a result of 1 hour 23 minutes and 18 seconds and the Mac Studio uh, definitely faster, noticeably faster at 44 minutes and 42 seconds. Now as a bit of a bonus uh, test what I also did was uh, fired up iMovie and got one of my old 23 minute vlogs to uh, export onto the desktop at 1080p uh, which is the setting that I used for this particular vlog on YouTube and here you can see that the iMac took 21 minutes 34 seconds and the Mac Studio once again significantly faster at 8 minutes and 4 seconds. So there you go that's the Mac Studio all set up now. Um, I thought it was worthwhile doing this comparison test uh, between um, the Mac Studio, a brand new computer and an old 10 year old uh, iMac um, because on YouTube with the uh, release of uh, the Mac Studio recently um, quite a lot of people are reviewing um, the, the computer and how it uh, stacks up against things like the Mac Pro or the MacBook Pro or something like that. Um, which is all very well, but it doesn't really take into account upgrading from an old computer. So that's the reason why I've done this, and I wanted to see exactly what the benefits are when it comes to photo editing. So I hope you found that useful. Um, I've just got the small matter of editing 2,704 Lake and Heath pictures now. So thanks for joining me, and I'll see you again soon.